So these next series of videos, we're gonna show you what makes a good CCTV camera, basically how to install that camera and how to connect it up to the phone. So the quick series of short videos that give you an indication of how to set up a CCTV system. But this particular video, we're gonna show you what makes a good CCTV camera and what to avoid when choosing that camera. You know, there's so many cameras on the market. How do you decide which camera is right for you? A lot of the time, people just look at the number of megapixels. You know, the more megapixels, the better the camera, right? Not so. There's a range of things to consider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through six things to look for when deciding to choose that CCTV camera. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the construction of the camera, plastic versus metal. When choosing a camera, you, know, you look at the construction of the camera. You know, a metal camera will handle the UV light and will not fade since it's coated. A plastic camera, on the other hand, will generally fade and turn yellow over time. And that really depends on that type of plastic that's used as well. So the second thing to look for is you've got turret, versus turret versus dome versus a bullet camera. You know, these are essentially the three types of cameras available. With dome cameras, everything is secured within the cover of the dome. So when the dome is on, the lens is harder to adjust and all the LR, 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 <laughs> IR LEDs are enclosed within that dome. You know, a turret camera, on the other hand, has their lens and IR separate. So that's on the front of the camera. The benefits of a turret camera is that since those LEDs and the lens are separate, and it's not encased within the dome itself, you don't get rain dust that accumulates and sits on the top of the dome itself. You know, this can cause blurry pictures and you know, just cause it to look a lot fuzzy. So on cheaper cameras, sometimes the seal is also not very tight against the dome, and that IR can also reflect back into the lens and cause that image to be washed out. So next we have like bullet cameras. You know, bullet cameras are allowed there and they are more noticeable and stand out compared to say, you know, your turret or your dome cameras. But if you want it to, to blend in, then you're probably better off going towards that turret and then dome style. And it'll give you that better option and just hide it within those eaves. You know, it really comes down to the preference as the overall camera function is basically the same throughout all of them. So the third thing to look for is the IR strength. This is the amount of light that is invisible uh, to the human eye, but the camera can actually see it. You know, some cameras claim to see 30 meters, some claim 50, some even claim 15 meters or less. So depending on the application, you may need to choose the camera with a longer range. And that leads us into number four, which is how many megapixels do I need? Basically, your megapixel count refers to how many photosensitive sites your sensor contains. These photo sites act like buckets that collect light. The larger the bucket, the more light can be captured. The size of the camera sensor determines how much of this light can be collected and used to create that image. The larger the camera sensor size, the more information it can capture. The more light it can collect, the cleaner and clearer the video will be with less noise producing better quality images when, say, compared to those smaller sensors. You'll generally find that the lower the resolution, the better the low light performance will be, as those photo sites are larger to capture that light. On the flip side is that you'll not be able to zoom in and see more detail. So now that comes into number five, which is what lens size do I choose? So you've got 2.8mm, you've got 4mm, and you've also got 6mm. Basically, the way this works is the smaller the number, the larger the field of view. A 2.8mm lens will give you an overall view, whereas that 6mm lens will have that narrower field, meaning it will only capture part of the area. Example, that 2.8mm lens is great to give you an overall shot of, say, your backyard or the factory, but will lack any detail when trying to, say, identify a fire face. A 6mm lens pointed, say, at the end of the dry road door will only give you not give you that overall view, but will give you more detail being able to capture a face or see something in a bit more clarity. So number six is fixed versus very focal. So this will depend on if you know what you're trying to achieve. If you know what you want to capture, then go with a fixed lens. However, you're unsure about the camera's purpose or you know, what you're trying to capture, then a very focal is the way to go. So essentially, once you've adjusted that lens anyway, it will become fixed at that focal length. You know, very focal lenses are also more expensive but they can also be manually adjusted or some can be motorized where you can adjust it from the software or the NVR. So this leads us into, you know, which products to avoid. There's so many camera manufacturers in the market, you need to choose one that is reliable and gives you the support when needed. You know, always try and avoid wireless security cameras. You know, these can easily be blocked by Wi-Fi jammers and also prone to interference causing dropouts. Look, if you've got no other choice, then use this. Otherwise, a hardwired connection is always more secure. It's less prone to hacking and provides a stable data transmission. You know, try and stay away from the cheaper cameras on the market. These are normally found in your large hardware and electronic stores. They're more targeted towards the DIY, 
DIY market and are cheap for a reason. They will still record and do the necessary functions, but the old saying is you get what you pay for is true, especially when it comes to CCTV cameras. Most importantly, make sure that you have the support. If you lose your password or need some help troubleshooting and setting up, make sure there's someone there you can talk to, someone that can help, whether that be the camera manufacturer or the company you purchased it from. Choose a camera manufacturer that has a solid warranty behind them. Look, if you're not getting at least three years warranty, I would look at another camera manufacturer. So in the next video, we're gonna go through uh, what to look for in a network video recorder and the types of hard drives used in the surveillance industry. So if you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to click on the bell to subscribe. This will let you get notified of our latest product reviews and tips designed to help save you time. We're always here to help and support your business.